I think we're going. Hey there, guys, and uh, we've got uh, the wonderful Dr. Sarah Farron here from us, all the way from New Zealand, nice and early on a uh, Monday morning. So thanks, Sarah, for being here. Thanks for having me, Sam. I'm looking forward to sharing. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of fun. This is your first time. But this will be your first year speaking at the Innate Summit this year, and we're pretty excited about having you there. So tell us a bit about you. For those that don't know you in Australia or maybe um, you know the students, even the Australian Kairos, uh, tell us a bit about where you come from or who you are and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, uh, Sarah Farrant, uh, my background actually is, has to do a lot in sport. So, uh, I've got a phys ed degree and um, a postgraduate in psychology, degree in general science and then chiropractic as well. I'm married to an American who was, just happened to be born in America to Australian parents. We've lived in Australia, we've lived in the US and now we live here on this beautiful island called Waiheke Island in New Zealand, which is awesome. Wow. And we studied in, and we, studied in uh, we, we got our, physical, uh, our um, chiropractic degree from Palmer College of Chiropractic in Iowa. In you said you're married to an American, but he's got Australian parents. So therefore, has he got an yeah. Aussie accent or American accent or New Zealand accent? He is an Aussie through and through. So his parents are both Australian. They were doing what we were doing, studying overseas. They were studying something different and they uh, had uh, his older brother and himself, Randall, in, uh, in the States. So much like us, we had our eldest boy in the States. Mm -hmm. So all of our kids have American citizenship as well. So no. they're kind of, we're a global family, I guess, in terms of living in different places, which has provided us with lots of different opportunities, which has been awesome. And please tell me his name, something like Bruce or Robbo or something. What's his name? <laughs> Randall. 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 That yeah. works pretty well. <laughs> nice. All right. A oh, pretty cool story. And so tell us, we've obviously, oh, I know a bit about your story, but I'm not going to kind of ask too much uh, now. We'll leave some of, some of it for the stage, but also some of it for now as well. So tell me, um, obviously, you, this, you worked and you got your education and, um, over America. And then after America, what happened then? We then went to Australia and uh, we actually met Mark Postles as well, as you would, you know, you would well know in terms of your relationship with him. And he is an ex-Palmer graduate and he came over and we did a big, oh gosh, I think there was 30, 30 of us Australians studying at one time. Wow. And with all of our partners, we all put together. And so Randall and I used to host a dinner kind of every year around the Lyceum time and Mark and Jackie came to one of those. And then we all got talking. And then he said, if you're ever coming back to Australia, um, you know, would you like to come and work with us? So that's kind of what we did. We were only ever going for a couple of years. And then we were looking at Tasmania um, or back somewhere in the States. Um, but we ended up being there for a lot longer as you usually, you know, do when you're enjoying it. And it was such a great group of people at that time, um, at his practice. And yep. then we left there and went to New Zealand. So we ne never actually went back to Melbourne, even though we're Melbourneites. Nice. So do you enjoy coffee then? No, I don't drink coffee. Oh, see. <laughs> I knew there was something oh wrong with you, actually. So I knew there was something wrong with you, but now I finally found it. Good. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's because it's nice and early on a Monday morning. I'm just enjoying you know, looking forward to my coffee. So anyway, um, tell us, obviously, the date summit you're speaking this year. I'm very excited to have you there. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, um, obviously, I think I told you before, um, the survey we've done with quite a few of our uh, attendees, asking what they want to have more of. Uh, and they've yeah. kind of much said things like patient retention, uh, getting new clients in the door as well yeah. as speaking the chiropractic message, speaking vitalism or even kind of being able to communicate the chiropractic message correctly. Um, it's going to allow them on day, you know, allow them on Monday morning. So what were kind of things could you uh, bring to the, to the, uh, to the audience, I suppose? Um, I'll definitely bring that whole understanding of a vitalistic way of life. So how that infiltrates in, into a family dynamic, how it infiltrates into your own life, how that will then infiltrate into your practice life. So starting with the individual first and what does that actually mean to, to someone in terms of when someone says that, you know, I live a vitalistic lifestyle, well, well what is that? You know, lots of people say that it's about our innate intelligence and it's, it governs our body and it has, um, it has our... Uh, or it has the ability to help us function, et cetera, et cetera, via our nervous system, right? There's that understanding. But then there's a whole other way of looking at a vitalistic lifestyle, which is about those um, uncontrollable or, and unforeseen forces that surround us and help, our, help us guide our physical existence. And as a result of that and understanding that, life can be very, very different. So for years, Sam, 
there was always two ways to look at health. There was the allopathic approach to health and then there was the um, alternative approach to health. So back in 2010, so about 10 years ago, I started writing down in bullet point form what all the differences were for an allopathic approach, an alternative approach. The alternative being a, a bucket where all these health professions sit that aren't dispensing medications or drugs of any kind and doing surgery. So in this alternative bucket sat chiropractic, right? And of course, chiropractic as a profession, we're like, we're not an alternative to anyone. We're a separate and distinct profession. Well, when I looked at a whole plethora of different things from language, different professions use, the clothing that they wear, their processes, their locations, their education, all of that based on my own experience growing up, but also on my research I was doing those 10 years ago. And this is not, I mean, this is not in a, a research setting. This is just my own research that I would go out and look and collect data. And as a result of putting all of those pieces together under bullet points, I then worked out that, you know what, there's a whole lot of bullet points that sit on this side that aren't belonging to anything. And as a result of that, I then made a third health approach. So I wanted something that started with A that would be easy for the population at large to understand and remember. So then I started doing, looking in my etymology dictionary because I am a word nerd. I love breaking down words. I love finding the root meanings. I love finding their origins because those words hold such a key meaning to how we do our life now and how we blindly do our life. So allopathic, when you break pathic down, means, means remaining passive. So I'm like, bingo, there we go. We go to someone to get something to take something away. And in that interaction we remain passive we we hand over you tell me what's wrong with me and we'll do that that's the allopathic then the alternative when i ask people around the world when i speak well, what does native mean most people most people say that it means um, natural or of the earth whereas native actually means offering a choice and then i thought bingo there we go we've got alternative and then we've got all um, we've got all allopathic and then we've got alternative so when you move out of the allopathic approach the alternative is the easiest one to go to because you are to a degree still remaining passive but you are still going to someone to get something that person is just offering you a choice so now instead of taking aspirin you will have willow bark yeah same no. thing different understanding and so then i wanted to find a third name and the third name was alternate so I went scouring through the dictionary and I found the word alternate. And then obviously when we look up Nate, what does Nate mean? Nate means inborn. So all of a sudden we had this triangle with health in the middle that people could, could become like what I call a health slider to understand how to enter into the health arena. Suddenly we had people that were empowered with the understanding of what health is and then they could enter it from whichever angle that they wanted to enter it. Enter it provided they, un they understood what each one actually meant. Sarah, so what I'd like to... Goal. That is like, you're just making me get goosebumps right now on a Monday morning. And that's why I was so excited having you this year at the United Summer. That's why Gabby, my wife, hunted after you and handpicked you for about three years ago to find you to speak at the United Summit. So, wow, yeah, that's pretty exciting stuff. So yeah. I was just kind of no, getting goosebumps. So. Keep going. Oh, great. Well, and it's just so... And I get goosebumps too. You know, when, when I saw it, it's like... You know, there are chiropractors out there that are geniuses with putting techniques together. Gonstead, Dejanet, you know, you name them. There's, there's lots of them. For me, what jazzes me up is how do we organise the world's health information into bite-sized pieces so people can understand it. And when you break it down and you organise it in a systemized, like a neurological way, like a nerve system way, then it becomes irrefutable. You know, vaccinations, when you lay over vaccinations on top of this process that I've designed, it becomes irrefutable. It's like, oh, now I understand why you wouldn't do that. You know, it's not about anti-vaccination or, or um, vaccinators. It's about pro-health and that, that sits in that whole other category. So it's, I'm jazzed to be able to share all of this and how I broke it down and how it all kind of pieces together in a format that I think current chiropractors that have been in the profession for years that might be attending the innate summit will absolutely will absolutely love because it's it's new and it's fresh 
And yeah. then those students that are going through chiropractic college will be like, oh, wow, you know, now I get it. And, and they can feel that in their heart, you know, that, wow, this is what I'm here to do. This is, this is where my health profession sits in this alternate health approach. So my prediction, Sam, is that in, I would say, I, I remember back in 2005 when I was writing The Vital Truth, I predicted that by 2012, the word vital, vitalistic, vitality, anything vital would be everywhere. That's why I went and bought a whole lot of URLs. It would be everywhere. Hey, and I did. You know, and my, my prediction now, Sam, is that, that in the next five years, that it, it's kind of like a whim. It's kind of like in chiropractic. For years, everyone was like, I've got a peds practice. I've got a peds practice. I've got a peds practice. Well, now you go to a conference and people don't even say that. It's like, I've got a vital practice. I've got a vitalistic practice, yeah, et cetera, sure. et cetera. So my, my thing is that that's going to wear thin after a period of time. I'd say probably the next five, seven years. And the alternate health approach will be the one that we will utilize as a profession going forward because that's where we sit. Hey, you know that we're not alternative. If you watch, if you're on Facebook or on any of those kind of social media platforms, and now that for some reason they don't allow us to have the music coming through straight away, they've often just got the video playing the music. And oh, yeah. if someone's watching this film of this uh, podcast, what's it called? This uh, interview, I think your passion shines through your eyes so much, even without using the words. Your passion and your excitement for the innate or the um, the inborn way of thinking is so powerful, and your eyes pop it, your face pops it, your passion is there. And that's kind of what, why we love to do. We can't wait for you to speak this year because you are so passionate around this discussion. Innate intelligence um, or the, uh, in, you know, the, the eight word, which is why we have the innate summit for that same reason. We have a similar belief to you. And uh, yeah, your passion is exciting and electric. And, and as I said, I've had a few times before. And um, I think that our audience, we have a, quite a good diverse group of speakers. And um, you definitely bring a lot of that. Um, I suppose you've done the work before. You've written a book. You've got the the that almost left brain way of bringing a vitalistic concept into the left brain thinking rather than here we are just the hippies out in the corner, you know, yeah. kumbaya and smoking whatever we're doing, you know, we can bring some of that kind of um, that professionalism back into the profession, which I think you bring in a big way. So um, Thanks, that's man. a really exciting thing. So I, uh, and it, I mean, you know, I'm so excited for us. And I think you haven't, had, you've been speaking in Australia for a little while, but you said before that you're more well known, I suppose, in the U S and maybe in Europe. Some of the Aussie docs might know who you are, obviously some of the guys that have been around Mark Postle circles and that kind of stuff. And even if you've been in the profession for a little while, you obviously would have heard your name. But um, can you, what's the name of your book again? Uh, I've got two. So the first one was The Vital Truth that so came back out in 2006, seven, yep. six. Um, and the second one is The Health Illusion, Is It Killing You? Oh, and, it, it talks. And, and I'll share a little bit about illusions when I speak and because I think that's a really, the way in which I do that is really powerful as well in terms of having people see the illusions that we see that they don't think that they're seeing and then how does that, you know, wrap into this way in which we approach health. And yeah. I think if we can un unwind that piece as well, then, um, you know, people have a, a greater pathway to living the life like we do without medications, you know, home, three home birth children, the last of which was a breach, trusting in yourself, not giving them drugs or medication, all, all of our kids playing sport to a high level and, you know, helping to change a community. So, and I'm not um, going to, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this and I know a bit of your story. So uh, we might leave this full detail for the stage or maybe for a conversation at the United summit, but um, uh, your story and all, you've been through your ups and downs as well with the children and having uh, the, the baby, the babysitter process take, you know, put you through the ringer, which might make no sense to anyone else besides me and you. But that is that story in itself. I mean, everyone has had their troublesome times and the fact that you've had your belief in this and then to have that kind of taken away. I won't go into it now. We might leave that for in the, in the future. But you do definitely stand extremely strong in this space and uh, obviously you're very passionate around it. And uh, you're going to be a massive addition for the uh, for the stage this year at the United Summit. So um, we might need to kind of call it a wrap. We have been on, we said about 10 minutes. We might have just gone over that. So thank you so Sorry. much for being here. No, that's, that's my fault, actually. I was kind of, I was there for a day, actually. So and that's saying a lot for me. I like to speak as well. Um, so look, thank you very much. Obviously, the United Summit's coming on this, uh, the 3rd and 4th 
uh, August 3rd and 4th. And there's going to be a Friday night session as well for all those first 100 docs that get involved and let us know. Um, any like, final last words? I, I am so blessed to be able to speak at the Naden Summit. I, I can't thank you enough to be able to have the opportunity to um, help, you know, 400, 500, however many people are in the audience, you know, have a different understanding of what we do as chiropractors and therefore be able to change first and foremost themselves and then step forward to change their community. So I'm blessed. So thank you. Well, thank you very much for saying yes. I mean, finally, I think we asked you about two years ago and you're always busy and your agenda was always pretty pretty full. So after two years, we finally managed to lock you down and, and lock in some dates. So we're very excited about having you here, even for this Skype call. It took me it took us a good three or four months to get that. <laughs> so, so you're a busy person. Thank you very much for, um, for, for acknowledging us and for coming along. And um, yeah, we'll see you on the 3rd and 4th or the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of August. See you awesome. guys. Thank you, Sam. No worries. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye.